Thank you. Welcome you tonight. Welcome you tonight. Opportunity to be on your new page for the first time. And, um, I look forward to all the other people that are going to touch this platform yeah. and have an opportunity to share. It's been good thus far. Yeah. It's really been a blessing. Yeah. Let's see if you can log in there. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's a privilege and an honor to have you here. I know you are a busy woman, so I really don't take it for granted. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I, I'm grateful. I'm very grateful. And oftentimes, we get so consumed with everything that else that we have going on that we uh, really have an opportunity to share and give back. Um, so in this particular instance, that's what I see this as, and... Um, you know, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. Of course, we have nerves, yeah. you know, um, just because I don't generally do live and things of that nature, but I definitely think it's important to really share what God has given us um, so that we can bless someone else and encourage yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Welcome, Hannah. Hannah. Please like and share this video, you guys. Like, share, heart it, put your state in there. Welcome, Hannah. Thank you for tuning in tonight to the internal work of love. And of course, you know who I'm with. Miss <laughs> Candace Codwell. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining. I'm going to give a couple more minutes for some viewers to tune in. In which they may be slow tonight because tonight is the first night. Hey, Danny. The, tonight is the first night that we are awesome. Um, that we are live from this page 
Welcome, welcome, Yvonne. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Yes. Hey, <laughs> welcome to the Internal Work of Love with Betty Fisher. I am Betty Fisher, host, founder, and transformation coach of this segment. And I am with Miss Caldwell, Candace Caldwell tonight. And uh, I'm really honored to have her here. I know she is a busy woman. Share this video, you guys. Please do. Like, heart, share. Thank you, Jessica, for tuning in. She's a busy woman. So I am really, I really appreciate this time she's spending with me. And this, the season that, you know, her business is, is really a... Uh, picked up so I'm, I'm thankful and, um, and I'm grateful for the break yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need to stand up and get some fresh air yeah. so you know um, in the midst of creating some yeah. fabulosity for the <laughs> young ladies this season but I'm grateful for the opportunity to be here for you guys yeah. today so I was thinking about you today and um, and I really got kind of tickled because my mind kind of go from one extreme to the next when I, in terms of, of defining, but, and I just will share my thoughts today about okay. you. And I just mm -hmm. jotted down quickly the things that I was thinking about about you. For one, you are an originator. You're not a duplicator. You're authentic to your gift. You're authentic to your craft. Thank you. Your hands are blessed. Your vision is anointed by God. Thank you. It truly is. Your voice is sultry. Sometimes it makes me want to raise my hand and worship. Mm -hmm. And other times it makes me want to get a cigarette and smoke <laughs> and, sit back and sit back and listen mm -hmm. to you. You just have this, this essence you embody that's just so beautiful. And um, it's soothing. It's just really soothing. So I really appreciate the relationship that we have established. Yeah. Likewise. I, yeah. Likewise. You really inspire me. Yeah. You do indeed. Thank you. It, you said it's hard to hear over the music. Okay, we've turned it off now. Sorry, <laughs> Hannah. Is uh, that better? <laughs> <laughs> so I want to um, introduce her, but I want to thank you guys for tuning in tonight and let everyone know, share this video if you haven't, that we are here now live weekly. Um, the videos will be uh, recorded live from this page weekly so that I can use my personal page and not flood it with, with um, the business of the internal work of love. And some things will still be shared on there, but the majority of the content will come from this page. So I want you guys to get the message out. So thank you for those who have tuned in tonight. Thank you so much. And I also want to put a plug in for what's to come next month, the Empowerment Seminar and Symposium scheduled for May 18th. And we will be advertising for that very shortly. You should be seeing that soon. So, um, yes, prepare yourself, your, your schedules. Hope you guys can join us. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be a blessing, a lot of treats, a lot of things that's going to happen there. And I will not give it away. But thank you guys for tuning in. And I want to uh, announce and introduce my guest to some and others just to welcome her um, to the segment. So thank you. I saw you, Katisha, on. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you. I am here me. with Candace Codwell, CEO of Bot Exotica. And her topic tonight is to jump or justify and she's going to give you her transformational journey and story behind her topic so here's absolutely Candace. well thank you guys for joining i chose the topic to jump or to justify because it's so relatable as it pertains to things that have happened in my life and even now um, with my current season I feel like to jump or to justify is something that we all have experienced a thought of um, and or have actually done it and have something to shout about or something to be excited about. Um, for me, 
particularly my life journey has been about the jump. Um, so many times I have found myself in situations where I have um, basically, you know, doubted what I was capable of, what I would do or should do, how people would perceive things, mm -hmm. um, where it would go if I had enough. Mm -hmm. And I knew at a very young age that I was blessed with uh, gifts and talents that allowed me to exercise my creativity in several different ways from uh, fashion design, mm -hmm. sketching and um, painting, uh, interior design, mm -hmm. uh, cooking. Everything wow. that I touch for the most part has some form or element of creativity um, that I absolutely love. Um, I'm inspired by so many different things, but in that same essence, I had a lot of fears. Um, those fears just came about because of, you know, your inability to believe in what you're capable of. Mm -hmm. um, you may hear people on several different occasions say, you know, oh my God, I can't believe that you do this. You know, yeah. oh my God, your makeup looks so great. Why don't you do this? You know, I've been asked uh, about YouTube videos and, mm -hmm. you know, different things of that nature. But a lot of times the reason why you don't go for it is because of that doubt. And when you take the jump, that leap, then it puts you in a place where you have the uncertainty, you feel that drop in your stomach, you're not sure where you're going to land because the parachute hasn't opened. Yeah. But when you do land, when you do relax in that moment and accept it and just dive, then you find yourself, you find your parachute opening and you can exhale and release because you know that that landing is going to be safe and comfortable and I think that's what stops us mm -hmm. on a multitude of occasions for from going for it um, and so I, I think that in this particular uh, instance that this platform is one that I wanted to utilize to speak to so many women out here yeah. um, the women in this community specifically are so many queens that are chasing their dreams and doing things that um, you know, inspire them and uh, doing makeup and, you know, coming yeah. out with lines of t-shirts and different things of that nature and the support that is rallied around them and one another mm -hmm. is so special and so amazing. But you won't get to that point unless you take that leap, yeah. unless yeah. you jump, unless you act upon that idea um, and remove the uncertainty from your life. Um, and so in this particular instance, I, I salute all the young queens that are out here and the older ones that are um, going after the things that God mm -hmm. has put in you. Um, a lot of times, you know, I use the example um, in the instance of talking about a jump of if you are in a situation where someone poses the question to you that in 10 years, you may still be in the same space. Mm -hmm. Would that be sufficient for you? Right. You would never know what you have the opportunity to achieve unless you take that leap, unless you take that jump, unless you're comfortable with being in the same space 10 years from now. Right. Would you be happy with yourself? Wow. Would you be more inspired, more happy, more fulfilled by knowing that you actually took that chance, then there is nothing that can actually stop you from moving forward in anything that you have a desire to do. I think that for me um, also, of course, I grew up in the Lord um, and I have a Christian background and a praying mother mm -hmm. who is um, definitely a Proverbs woman. Yeah. Um, and she inspires me so much on so many levels, but one thing that I can truly say that she's instilled in me is faith mm -hmm. and positivity and focus. Um, and in that faith, that faith part is 
the substance of things yeah. hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. So we can't necessarily see our path. Yeah. We don't know where God yeah. is going to take us, you know, once we decide to go in this direction or once we accept something that he has given us, you know. We actually have that fear, but mm -hmm. that faith is what will sustain us and yeah. take us through to that next, you know, space or that next journey. So um, that is really the the turning point or the, the, the deciding factor between the jump or the justify. Yeah. When we justify, we yeah. make excuses, you know. We have all types of reasons as to why we shouldn't go in that direction yeah. or what would happen if we did jump. Or why we could fail. Mm -hmm. Or, um, you know, anything that can be an obstacle for the most part. Um, and I thought about the story of Jabez in the Bible. And he talked about asking God to increase his territory. Mm -hmm. And to take his hand. If he had not had faith that God would increase his territory. Yeah. And would take him by the hand that he would have never received all the blessings that he had for him. So those obstacles that can stand in the way of our opportunities really, in most instances, seem bigger than God. Yeah. Yeah. But the faith, that trust, the knowing that he is capable of giving us the desires of our heart yeah. when we ask for those things from him and when we move in that direction is all that we need mm -hmm. the justify is just the block the justify is the block it's the block it's the thing that stands in the way of us being our most successful self of us being the person that God has designed us to be mm -hmm. you know and so I think that it's very very important to keep that in the forefront of our mind in every instance in every situation you know um, I feel like being here in Benton Harbor it has given me a new uh, renewed sense of uh, focus as it pertains to the things that are important to me. Mm -hmm. um, in my career path, I have been in the makeup artistry industry for about, I'd say, 21 years. I'm not trying to tell my age or anything, <laughs> but 21 years. Um, and I worked in the corporate capacity, um, working for a large brand mm -hmm. as a district manager. Um, and I've also worked for Mac for a few years um, and gotten a lot of certifications and met some wonderful mm -hmm. people in the industry. Um, and in those instances, you find yourself thinking like, you know, I have this talent, I have this gift, but I'm using it in this capacity, a smaller capacity right, right. than what I'm possibly capable of right. or what I feel like I'm capable of. And you become comfortable as well. Mm -hmm. And so you're comfortable yeah. with working for someone else and doing things that are outlined based off right. of someone else's vision. But the desire to do something on another level, to make the money for yourself, to build something from ground up, can be the scariest thing that there is. Mm -hmm. But the in interesting thing about God is, is that because he already has this path or this plan for us, that we aren't paying attention to or yeah. don't know anything about, then we know we have the thoughts of what it is that we would desire to do. He puts us in a space where we become uncomfortable. Okay. He puts us in a space where nothing seems to go right and everything seems to be in disarray because of the factor that we're not necessarily aligned with his plan anymore. But then when we get super uncomfortable mm -hmm. it puts you in such a discomfort that you decide I have to move so so God makes you uncomfortable so a lot of people revert back because they're uncomfortable but uncomfortable is really what faith is yes. mm -hmm. this is good mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that discomfort is what usually catapults you to jump.
that is my story. You know, I was there. I was in Atlanta uh, over 18 years and in a situation where I was working hard for someone else and making good money and comfortable. Mm -hmm. But things started to happen in my life that pretty much made me feel like I needed to go. And I was like, Michigan? Oh no, you know, cold, mm -hmm. not ready. Where am I gonna work, right, you know? Right. What am I gonna do? And I'm thinking in the capacity, I'm thinking small, you know? Because that's kind of what we're aligned to yeah. do. Like naturally, we think small. We know we have big dreams and desires and things that we're trying to achieve. But mentally, we always go to the smaller space. So I'm thinking in this, along the same lines as what I have been doing. And that's what I have to do mm -hmm. because this is what I'm trained to do. And this is where my area of expertise is. Um, and then I'm like, you know, my degree is in fashion design. And if I move back to Michigan... How am I going to utilize my gift in fashion design? I don't have the right people to right. share this gift right. with. Where What is the platform? Like, where am I going with this, right. God? You know, like, how am I going to make this happen? And eventually, I just decided I'm going to, to jump. I'm going to leap. I had things with the family and different things of that nature that were going on, and it made me so uncomfortable that I mm -hmm. felt like I needed to be here regardless. Mm -hmm. So that was what God designed for me to do. I had no idea what was going to happen oh, wow. next on the wow. opposite side. So that was that jump and then that sinking feeling in your yeah. stomach where the parachute is an opening and it felt like everything around me was collapsing. Everything that was comfortable, that was stable, mm -hmm. that made me feel secure was falling apart and I didn't understand it and I'm like what have I done like right. why is this happening to me I mean to be transparent I f was homeless mm -hmm. I had to make moves very quickly and make decisions very quickly and usually on my job search I never have a problem I've never had an right. interview that I didn't ace I've never had a situation where there was it was questionable about who you were going to choose for the opportunity. It just flowed. But in this particular instance, once I made that jump, it yeah. felt like everything was blocked. Wow. Everything was blocked. Wow. And I said, why, God? You know, why is this happening? And then I'd say maybe, I don't know, six months in things started to change a little bit. I would mm -hmm. come home and I would visit my mom and whenever I come to visit my mom, I ended up being booked for makeup. And it started to grow and grow and grow and grow. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm living in Detroit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm traveling here to do makeup, but come on, Ben Harbour, slow down. You know, mm -hmm. I have customers here too. You know, how am I going to do this? And one day God said, you know, go to the Chamber of Commerce. You've written a business plan before. Maybe you should write a business plan. Mm -hmm. Think of a concept for mm -hmm. this environment, this area, so that if, in fact, you do settle here, you'll be able to utilize your gift, but at the same time, share with others your uh, the ambiance, the mm -hmm. environment, the things that you desire and you love when you go into a specialty place to have services mm -hmm. provided. And I went on it right away, even though I was fearful, even though I had questions about my ability to um, really share what it was that I had as it pertained to a vision, I did. I did it. I moved forward. And immediately after that meeting, I remember driving out of, out of you know, the parking area mm -hmm. and up the street, and there was a business on the left side that was for rent. And I looked, I'm like, oh, Lord. And the crazy thing is, is that it was the business that 
a relative of mine had owned when I was younger and uh -huh. I first moved to the Benton Harbor area. It was, um, you know, a space in the same building. And so it had a nostalgia that mm -hmm. kind of drew me in and made me sit for a minute and kind of, you know, take in that moment. And I wrote the phone number down and then there's that fear again, you know, that justification yeah. Yeah. that pops yeah. in. Uh this may not work out. You don't even know how much this place is and how are you going to pay rent for a building when you don't even have yeah. a large enough clientele as of yet? And what is this and what, you know, like so many questions and rather than me in most instances reasoning and going into the more logical uh, sense, mm -hmm. I actually decided to jump. Wow. I made the phone call. That phone call was less than five minutes, and I had a meeting scheduled mm -hmm. to actually view the premises. And within three to five days, I had keys. Mm -hmm. Wow. What was the time span between you coming here and you experienced some time being homeless until being able to rent this building? What was that window of time? Of Believe it or not, it was less than a year. Okay. And that's how God works. Wow. It is the most unbelievable. It gives me chills just thinking about it because, you know, oftentimes I say to myself that I am so amazed at the way God has wow. Wow. blessed me because of my decision to jump. It has been a no-brainer. There has been no help, no assistance. There has been no extreme lines of credit. There has been wow. no wow. angel investors. There has been nothing but God. Nothing My but God. Him. And mm -hmm. when you say going from a state of homeless and confused, overwhelmed, you know, a, a mix of emotions to solidifying your space, even though I still had my concerns about how things would manifest they continued to increase after I followed his plan and that's what I would challenge so many of you to do is to remove the fear the doubt the perceptions that you are incapable of doing the things that God has placed you here to do it's by design but it's yeah. also very important to identify with your gift yeah a lot of times you can spread yourself a little thin and try a bunch of things and nothing is successful but that's because we're not focused on what god has actually given us yeah that thing that one thing or that those things are going to be fluid in your life they're going to be things that actually feel good and feel like it's not work it's not a job it's not uh anything that you have to research you don't have to follow another person in order to gain inspiration yes. on it yeah it's a visionary yeah. thing and i yeah. feel like that's something that god has blessed yeah. me with i feel like i am a visionary and i don't mean it in a haughty way in any yeah. way form or fashion i feel that God has blessed me with a gift of creativity. And I feel like creativity is exactly what it is. It's not something that's duplicated. Yes. You know, it is original. Yes. It comes from inside of yes. you. And it radiates. And it's contagious. So you inspire others to move and do mm -hmm. things similar mm -hmm. because of that divine gift. And that divine vision. So with your makeup before coming here, so you were you were in the field as far as corporate work. Yes, I was um, basically an account coordinator or district manager for Clinique. Okay. Um, and I did that for about five years. And then I was also a store manager for a $2 million Mac store. Um, and I did that for a couple of years mm -hmm. as well. Um and as it pertains to design, I never got the opportunity to dive into it as heavy as I would like to because mm -hmm. after college, I was quite busy in the cosmetic field, whether it was, um, you know, a store manager or a district or, okay. you know, things of that nature. 
and it really took so much of my time. It was extremely time consuming. Right. Although I learned a lot, um, and I feel like it had positioned me right. for where I am now. We have no idea right. what God's plan is, but I feel like I learned so much. It was preliminary, uh, you know, preparation yeah. for what he had in store for me on the other side, I was still helping clients, um, with designs, but it was a freelance thing, you know, um, by appointment, by request, those who knew, uh, of what I had to offer, they would actually request, you know, specialty garments and things of that nature. And when I had time, <laughs> then I would, uh, definitely complete those things and that is what brought me the most joy yeah. so I knew something was missing mm -hmm. and I had no idea what the next next round was going to be what the next step was so you were positioned to prosper yes and it was yes. all God's plan all his plan always always and wow. there are so many times that I still have fear I still uh waver on my decisions mm -hmm. I still get uh, butterflies and feel uncomfortable about mm -hmm. things, get anxiety, yeah. you know, from uh, pressure <laughs> in people. Um, but God always comes through. He always works it out. It always mm -hmm. is an opportunity for me to even see what he is capable of. Like he's constantly saying, see, I told you, you know, it's almost like I don't even have to have that questionable feeling mm -hmm. but you know you do because we're human but he always shows himself to be faithful yes he does and he's definitely shown himself to be faithful with you yes Tashi she was positioned to prosper thank you guys for tuning in <clears throat> thank you all for tuning in tonight to the internal work of love and I am here with Candace Caldwell and her topic is to jump or justify. I want to ask you a question, um, Candace, because you said early on, earlier on, you know you wanted to get into something fashion. However, you were not in that field per se at the time, but you, once you came here, I've known you for makeup initially. Mm -hmm. So when did you discover that gift along with you already are talented, anointed to do what you're doing as far as fashion. When well, did you discover the gift? The truth is, is that I discovered the gift um, in high school. Um, I had an opportunity to choose the curriculum of law. Um, I'm very much interested in the legal capacity of things. Mm -hmm. I was um, president of Student Senate in the Human Relations Debate. I'm very comfortable with uh, speaking to politics and things um, in that realm. But also, I had a very, very strong love for art. And that was okay. uh, what catapulted me into the design capacity. I took four years of art. Uh, one of those years, or two of those years, was advanced art. And all I wanted to do is draw dresses. Wow. <laughs> all I wanted to do is draw dresses and shoes and all things fabulous and... I would complete my projects, mm -hmm. you know, um, that were given to me for class. But in every opportunity, I wanted to do something um, beautiful. Mm -hmm. And the makeup kind of flowed in from okay. the design or okay. the art, actually. I went into makeup because getting into fashion design was um, a little bit more difficult. Definitely more costly, mm -hmm. um, and it was about who you knew and the positioning of where you're located. And I was in Atlanta, which is a very large and prosperous space mm -hmm. um, right now, but it's not the mecca of design. Um, and so, essentially, you have to be a little bit creative as it pertains to how to get exposure in that area. And makeup was another way for me to exercise yeah. my creativity and have an opportunity to paint on faces and make people look and feel more beautiful. So yeah. and it is still art. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Thank you. Hi, Tashi. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thanks Kara for tuning in. and Tequila. Welcome to my segment of the internal work of love. I need you guys to do me a favor because this is our first night viewing here, recording here. So if you would please share this video. Please. 
please share mm -hmm. this video onto your page so that um so that others may know who have who are late catching on that we are now here live weekly so thank you so much for tuning in thank, thank you tashi you. please share this message you guys um you know in entrepreneurship is not always an easy it's not an easy field to go into because in the in in the workforce in the corporate world we know we, we, we're going to get a check. Absolutely. We know we have benefits. Absolutely. Come with full-time employment. You have you have your days off and you're sick. But when you're an entrepreneur, if, if you're down, that's your money. That's it. And it's all you. And it's a difference when you're dealing with companies and corporations. You have customer service. You have a secretary. Yeah. You have someone who can, you know, kind of move things around and make things work. Um, but being in a space where mm -hmm. you know you are the all be all <laughs> um it definitely is something that takes qu quite a bit of patience mm -hmm. um a lot of faith uh, a lot of faith um and focus and being yeah. able to kind of tune out the things that are unnecessary at the moment you can only do so much yes, yes. you can only uh you can only have so many customers you know um, and every opportunity is not yours. Every customer oh, wow. is not yours. Um, and so that's why I say that I also salute so many of the young women in the community that are doing some of the same things that I'm doing is because I know what it takes and what goes behind it. And they, like myself, have to service their customers. Yeah. And it's a conditioning that you can't be prepared for in any other way. It's something that you really have to uh, learn day by day and I will just say that me having the opportunity to teach uh, managers in the corporate capacity yeah. um, on a level of cosmetics and learning skin care and learning uh, the structure of a face and where to apply certain mm -hmm. colors and how to deal with women of different demographics and different age profiles yeah. um, with different types of requests is very important. I think that is really cool to be artsy and things of that nature, but it's also important to know the individual, the type Absolutely. of individual that you're dealing with to be able to deliver something that they're comfortable with because yeah. not everybody, you know, and those are things that it com that comes with time and mm -hmm. comes with your exposure. So I agree because you do service a broad of diversity. I do. I and do. Um, I, I yeah, I think that's a wonderful thing you do that. Um, so the question I have for you, or maybe it's not a question, because you do that, and I, so do you, do you believe the corporate field um, conditioned you I as do. far as dealing with different variety, various customers? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I also think that um, my background has prepared me for that as well. Okay. Um, when I was in high school, I've always been really structured. So I built my own curriculum. Structure around the things that I wanted to be influenced by mm -hmm. um, moving out into the real world. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was the lieutenant governor of Key Club. I started off as the president and I became a lieutenant governor. It gave me the opportunity to um, be planted in an environment with a diverse group of yeah. people from Indian to Asian to Caucasian, you know, and I was the only African American um, on that platform. And it put me in a space where I saw a completely different world yeah. and things in a different light. But it also helped me to learn about their their cultures um, and how diverse they are from us and what they like. Um, and in those atmospheres, it helped me to be more comfortable moving into a corporate capacity where I was actually able to flex and mold myself yes. accordingly. And I think that that's important. You never want to be in a space where you box yourself off. Yes. Because when you box yourself yep. off, that's exactly what you get. You might as well tie a bow on it. I want wow. the opportunity to be able to expand and move into areas that are not actually enclosed. Um, and that's what growth is about. So when you box yourself off, you may as well tie a bow. Wow. So it is important to, to, to not only um, you've gotten the training and you've gotten the exposure, but 
as um, per se a makeup artist or any field that we go into in business, entrepreneurship, how important is that to learn and adapt to different cultures and races? It's very important. In any field of business, it's important to not only know different cultures, but to also research um, and to try to gain an understanding so that way you can communicate properly, uh, you can understand styles, um, you can understand delivery and certain communication and things of that nature. Um, and and I feel like that is something that has given me an edge mm -hmm. um, and given yes. me an opportunity to uh, have a more diversified clientele base is uh, establishing a comfort level with all different types yes. of clients and understanding that your environment should be flexible to that Absolutely. Um, because of the expectation and because of professionalism. If you don't actually put yourself in an environment where you know as an entrepreneur this is what I want to be able to offer you need to nestle yourself in certain spaces yes. around certain people. You need to engage with uh, those that are above, you know, so that you can actually raise yourself to that platform. Yes. If you close yourself off to those who are on the same level as you or who have not reached that level, mm -hmm. then you have no opportunity to learn, which is therefore your growth, mm -hmm. your growth pattern, you know? Um, and I feel like uh, just the same thing with hair. You know, if we don't trim those dead ends, That's right. we kind of stunt that. That's so right. you need to trim it off and allow yourself to be open to the growth, you know? And that's what positions you properly for, you know, every platform and opportunity. Yeah, yeah I, and I ask that question too because you, oh, you always hear, when you hear people are, who are frustrated African Americans about not getting the support in their community by mm -hmm. their own. And I'm always thinking to myself, there's a great big old world out here. Why are we just servicing ourselves? And uh, we're not going to get rich just servicing a wealthy, just providing for us. Yes, we should pro have something to service our own, but you have to have a bigger picture. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. There needs to be a bit. But it's also important that we pay attention to the factor that regardless of who is cheering us on and who is uh, the yes man or how many likes we get or yes. what is yeah. going on around us, that we stay focused in our lane because God is not looking for us to gain approval from those that are around us. We only need his approval. And he wow. already has our path set and engraved as to where we're going to go, where we're going to be, what we're going to achieve. So if we actually place our focus on other people and other individuals and we look for, um, you know, their approval, then we kind of... Be, become uh, unfocused yes, and we become frustrated and we lose our train of thought. We lose sight of what the goal is in the first place. I can't allow myself to focus on how many people uh, cheer me on, like my makeup, think my dresses are amazing, or any of those things. I know what God has gifted me with. Yes. I know what I'm capable of. I have seen his evidence be severe and strong yes. in my life. So that's what we have to take courage in and remove the doubt. Yeah, right. yeah. That's all about, that's you. all a part of the jump. That's all a part of that focus. Yeah, I, I want to um, pause here pause for a moment and thank you guys for tuning in to the internal work of love i am betty fisher host founder and transformation coach of this segment oh that was a long <laughs> break there but i this is so rich you guys so i hope you all are taking notes thank you tashi for commenting in the box now i do need you guys to comment in the box, rep your state. Where are you viewing this from? 
like, heart, share it, share this message. Please do. This is wisdom she is sharing from her experience as a business owner and sole proprietor. It's a lot that comes with this. And everybody isn't called for it. They want it and desire it, but there it takes a certain type of person for entrepreneurship. And you definitely have it. You have you. the it factor. Thank you. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you, Greg, for, for commenting. Thank you, Tashi. I wanted to say, you said something that um, made me think about a statement that that DeAndre made in, his, in the video with him, um, the segment with him. And he said, most people, most, choose popularity Absolutely. over the promise. Mm -hmm. We want the promise, but we choose the followers. And the followers aren't the one paying you. They're not the one supporting you. They're not there when all hell is breaking loose and none of the orders came in right and nothing goes. Just everything is wrong. Where are, the, where are your popularity groups? Where are they then? They disappear. They disappear because it's it's only momentary. It's in a lot of instances you will have people that are cheering you on and that are really heartfelt yeah. and that are there for and with you. But then majority of it is just cushion. You know, mm -hmm. it's just the cushion that like lies around it, mm -hmm. and you can't focus on that. Yeah. I find myself in a space where. I don't feel the need to post as much. I'm not yeah. looking for, uh, you know, people to, you know, cheer me on or to tell me that this was great or this was good. I want to share the things that I am super proud of as much as possible. Yeah. But the truth is, is that with me being extremely busy, it has to be the right timing. And whatever I get from it, whether it's, you know, happy mm -hmm. Uh, right, people cheering right, right. or if it's people that you know just kind of scroll past it that's something you have to learn to accept the goal the focus is on yeah. what you're actually doing in yeah. day to day and so I have a ton of pictures in my phone I could post all day for months right however I wouldn't be able to take care of my business my clients and do things professionally if I spend majority of my time yeah. in social media land and we get distracted you know, you go to post something and something pops up and somebody's yes, live and yeah. somebody posts yes. this and, you know, you spend hours in that zone. And as an entrepreneur, your goal is to work, is to gain revenue, is to satisfy your customers and so on and so forth. So that's where your focus should yes. be, you know, and then all the rest will follow, yes. you know. I agree. And you have to learn to celebrate yourself. Absolutely. And that's a part of that self-love. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that is one of the things that I, I really love about what you're doing. And this platform is helping people to understand that self-love is one of the greatest things that we can actually have. And self-love isn't about beauty. Although oh we can God. look yeah. fabulous on the outside and a lot of people look at me or a makeup artist and people who work in a glamorous industry and they feel like you have it all together mm -hmm. um, and they feel like you're always polished and everything is always, you know, but in truth, your true beauty is oh within. Yes. It's yeah. what you actually carry inside of you. It's to me. I'm providing a service, I'm giving you something beautiful, but if I'm able to share something with you that you can take with you that will enrich your life or make you feel yes. better on the inside in addition to how you look yes. on the outside, yes. then my job is it's... accomplished. So, <laughs> yes. you know. And that's what I, I get when I get you. The time I spent with you, and honestly, we've only been together twi twice. Three Three times, Three times now. now. Yeah. Three times yeah. now. And my first experience was getting my makeup done for my mm -hmm. 50th last year. Yes. And I said to myself, as you were stating, you're far more beautiful inside than you are outside. Thank you. 
And I know that strength came from the work you've had to do and loving yourself, setting standards, and staying true to who you are in the voice, the voice of God saying, no, this is the direction I have for you. You might be alone on this path, but this is where I have you. Because I, you can't tell me that this sometimes is not a lonely road being as authentic as you are to it yourself. Is. It is in a lot of instances, and there's a... You have to, in a lot of cases, shield yourself, you know. Um, first and foremost, it's always a challenge, but it's something that I'm working on more and more every day. So I always ask those who love me to hold me accountable. Um, however, the work is knowing that God is my shield, mm -hmm. you know. But I also have to find myself taking, um, taking time to myself. Um, shutting down from the world, removing the uh, the earphones or the things yeah. that, you know, blast in your ear on a daily basis, uh, putting on the blinders and keeping yeah. my focus yeah. in a particular place, in a particular space so that I can stay grounded in God and in what it is that I am trying to accomplish. And I think that's so important for so many yes. and things that happen in our life a lot of times also throw us off and make us feel like whatever is next is something I know I jumped before but I can't do this one mm -hmm. that's not yes. gonna work because yeah. so many things seem like they're tumbling or they're coming in the way to intercept mm -hmm. you know your progress and you're like I quit I'm done it's over. That's my story. I, on plenty of uh, instances and occasions, I am like, Ugh, enough. Enough of people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Enough of conversations. Enough of everything, you know, just because you become so overwhelmed. Yeah. But he always c catches us, you know, in the midst of that jump with that faith. Mm-hmm. He always catches us and shields us. I yes, talked about yeah. my first business here in the Benton Harbor area and how that worked. And I was able to do some great things, but that came to an end. And because of some things that were beyond my control. But God already put things together. Whereas in June, the year that I ended up moving, I was invited over by the owners of the present place that I am in and was giving a showing. Wow. And I was thinking to myself as I walked through this huge building, it's 2,500 square feet, and I'm like, what am I going to do with that? Well, what do I need with, I don't know. Well, why am I going, you know, like all these questions, like mm -hmm. while I'm looking, I'm taking pictures and everything, and I thought it was really nice, but I'm like, I already have something. Mm -hmm. So, you know, not knowing that God already. Wow foresaw wow. what yeah. was about to happen and it wasn't the best experience but it happened and as soon as he removed that the door opened for what he had already shown me in june of the year prior wow. and i'm on main street now on the main street where i have beautiful more beautiful traffic space. and more yeah. yeah and it's a beautiful space and i'm grateful to be able to see outdoors and you know enjoy that um, because I came from the city life, you know, I mm -hmm. felt like I needed a little bit more, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but it's just just amazing to see how he already has things lined up. And when you allow yourself to be distracted, I would have caused myself to mm -hmm. go in a completely different direction or shut down all the way and say, forget it. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. Yeah. of so many things. But I allowed him to lead and he opened doors bigger than I yeah. ever would have expected. Yeah. And he's continued to do that. Like, it's just unbelievable. Doors that no man can open or close. Absolutely. And you've put your faith in God. Yes. And you really have to. In the business of entrepreneurship, you have to put your faith in God. You can't depend on the economy, things changes, the community, the region, everything changes. So I, I can imagine that was a huge transition from Atlanta coming here. And charging your worth. <laughs> charging oh your worth. Like, um, that is really something that I've struggled with, you know. Yeah. For so many years, I have shortchanged myself. 
knowing the amount of work um, and the resources that I have and the expense that goes behind the things that are required to uh, create beauty um, in yeah. some capacities, I have shortchanged myself because of the fact that you want to make yourself make it comfortable for other people um, and be acceptable. Yeah. So that you can get the cheers yeah. and the, yeah. you know. Um, but in reality, in the end, you hurt yourself. You know, in the end, you're crying. In yeah. the end, you want to Charge take that vacation. Um, yeah, yes. You want to live your best life, but you're out here making everyone else beautiful and they're able to live theirs because you're uncomfortable with speaking to what you desire, what mm -hmm. you need, and what your worth mm -hmm. is. You know what I mean? And that was a part of my jump this year okay. is saying... You know, if they aren't able to follow or they can't go in the direction that my price point has gone in, again, that's not my customer. And I have to be accepting of that and understand that where God closes one door, door. he opens he'll, another. Yep, yep, he'll open another one. You're absolutely right. When do you find time for just Candace? <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. What is that? The phone rings, so I can imagine you getting calls and texts all time all the of time. day. I know I messaged you, but I wasn't expecting a, a, a reply right I away. I was happy to reply. I was nervous. <laughs> I was like, oh, Lord, is it time? Am I going to be okay? Can I be transparent? You know, all those things. But, I, you know, I was, I was accepting of it because mm -hmm. I know it's time and I want to share. And I want to be able to bless other individuals who um, have had some of the same you know obstacles that mm -hmm. I've experienced and let them know that God is faithful and we are able and we should stay focused and we should trust the process yeah. and we should jump do not justify it do yeah. not make an excuse just go for it Andre said I had to learn that people who want quality work will pay the quality price and it has paid off for me amen Amen. And if nothing else, at the end of the day, when you charge your worth, when the other obstacles come and the the combat or the uh, the disagreement or the mm -hmm. conversations that make you feel uncomfortable or the anxiety you might suffer or mm -hmm. the nights you stayed up all night and to the next wee hours of the morning yeah. with no food, no bathroom breaks, no, all those things, they, they, they feel better. <laughs> you yeah. can sleep. Yeah. at night knowing that at the very least you have received what you are worth in that particular instant it's the most gratifying thing it really is yeah. Yeah. and I'm grateful to those who are in my life who have pushed me to jump who have told me to charge my worth to stay focused to not be discouraged you know those those people that are in your life Absolutely. become you know, your angels. Absolutely. And I'm so grateful for you guys yes. if you're watching. Yes, that encourage you and keep you lifted. It is important, too, as an entrepreneur to have a solid group of women or men um, not only celebrating you, but supporting you because you mm -hmm. need a place to... Mm -hmm. Can, can mm -hmm. I let this I'm out? I'm working can on I that part. Okay. Whew. I'm working on okay. that part. I really am. I mean, I always had a circle, you know, um, a small circle um, and close girlfriends that have, you know, really been uh, inspiring and everything. But that moment that I really have. Wow. And that's something that um, I'm challenging myself to work mm -hmm. on this year, you know, is taking time for myself. I made a post recently and I was just saying, you know, it's just me. Because mm -hmm. it is. It's wow. just me. Wow. And I want people to know that I want to give them the best service, um, the most, you know, comfortable ambiance, the most beautiful dresses, the the most beat faces that I can. Um, and I will continue to do that. But I also am it's a just, human being. It's you just know? You. <laughs> I do need a meal. I do need yes. some sleep. And rarely... I, you know, there's been times where I rarely take those wow. moments. I, I rarely eat or I rarely sleep. 
and you hurt yourself that way. And sometimes you're not as focused. This is something that I'm learning. <laughs> I turned 40 this year. Wasn't ready. But um, <laughs> it's something that I'm learning is that, you know, you need those moments to mm -hmm. regenerate and restore yes. yourself yeah. and to be your best self, especially when it comes to creativity. Yeah. And that's uh, that's important for me. The creative part if I'm in distress and overwhelmed and anxious, I can't create. So I have to keep peace around me yeah, you know, or else is, it's not a good thing, you know. Any questions you guys may have for Candace while we are on, thank you all for tuning in. Thank you, Andre, for tuning in yes, to the Eternal Andre. Work of Love. <laughs> and if you guys can share this video, we need. Um, I need to let the viewers know we are here now. Every single week, we are going to be live here on this page. And if there are any, especially entrepreneurs that may have any questions, share this so they can come back on and, and, and ask questions. I have um, I have a question for you and maybe it may be in form of a statement. Because of the fact that it's just you doing everything and that is important to your business, revenue is how you live. Revenue is how you expand. There are the times you have to say no, and are you comfortable with that? Yes. There are times that I have to say no. And no, I'm not comfortable with it. Okay. I'm also not comfortable with, if I can be transparent, stating my price in some instances. Okay. But I feel like if I can be uncomfortable with stating my price, then I can be uncomfortable with telling someone no as well. Because the truth is, is that if you don't find the lines to say no, then you put yourself in compromising situations yeah. where yeah. you already knew that you would end up in the first place, you know? Um, and so if you know that that project isn't going to... Um, be financially supportive of what it is that you need to accomplish specifically in the timeline that you are given um, and the amount of work that mm -hmm. is required then you have to speak that okay no one will know if you That's don't right. you know That's and right. you find yourself regretting your decision you know how they say go with your first mm -hmm. mind it's one of those things you have to be perceptive and able to discern what works, yeah. you know what I mean? And, and and that's something that I find to be very important. If I was in a corporate um, or a more international mm -hmm. capacity or platform where I was dealing on a larger scale, then I wouldn't have the ability to be so hands-on and to make those right. type of decisions. But in this atmosphere, it's a specialty thing, you know what I mean? It's an opportunity for those who... Uh, attain my services and it's a you know experience for me as well I get off into those moments I want to see each thing come to fruition right I right. do a sketch of the garment I cut it I sew it I create the pattern wow. I acquire the materials it is a process and I am not a standard type girl, not basic. Right. Shout out to right. Tracy. Yes. <laughs> um, and so I I really find myself searching high and low for different vendors throughout other countries, India, um, you know, just wherever I can right. get what it is that I need, something that's different, something that has something intricate. And I feel like that's special. And because it's special... It's not meant for everyone. I agree. You know? Because so. of the love and passion that you that put into it. To, yeah, I agree. Cortez has a question here. There's a couple, but I'm going to get to his first because that's what I saw here. Um, well, let me go up a little bit. I have Tashi. Tashi. She said, what advice do you have for young ladies that aspire to be makeup artists but feel they aren't as good as the next? I think that you need to jump. I mm. think that you need to take flight. I think that you need to practice. Yeah. I think that it's very important when you have free time, when you have downtime, when you're doing nothing at all, when you have a special occasion, yeah. if you have a girlfriend who has a special occasion, um, that you take those opportunities and you go for it. And practice makes perfect. 
Um, and I think that you should be open to critiques. Yeah, that's good. And that good. allows you to grow. It that's allows good. you to um, be aware of things that people like and dislike. And um, and it, it allows you to be more perceptive yes. in your future opportunities. So jump. Go for it. Um, don't be afraid. Makeup is is uh, removable. <laughs> <laughs> it is something that it allows us to enhance our beauty. But if mm -hmm. you make a mistake, you can always correct it. It's not something that's permanent. Uh, and so in that particular instance, you just have to create a way and go for it until you see exactly what it is that you're looking for. Yeah. Okay. Cortez. He said, can you express the importance of understanding business before deciding, deciding to, to get into business? Oh, very important. Understanding the importance of business is uh, the number one fundamental based around it. Um, in order to be able to sustain, you have to have had some form of experience. Mm -hmm. um, you have to do your research. You have to know the things that go into maintaining a day-to-day, -day, specifically in a brick-and-mortar environment. You have all your overhead costs. You have licenses right. that you need to have. You have insurances, um, different things of that nature. It's not just a situation where you can step out uh into a space and just start to create. It really has a lot of fundamentals based around it. I think it's very important to have a business plan. Without a plan, the people perish. Um, yes, if you don't plan, you are sure to fail. Um, so I think that that is very imperative. It's important to research the market, um, to know what is going on around you, what price points are, yeah. um, you know, what businesses have done the same thing that you are doing before, uh, what their lifespan was. Um, when you're doing certain events and mm -hmm. certain things happen, you want an anniversary that in order to be able to see your growth and sustain, yeah. you have to be able yeah. to know your numbers. You have to know what piece is uh, the next part of the puzzle that needs to be put in place to keep it stable or else right. it's going to all fall apart. Um, I think all of those things are super important. But if you have no business structure, then ultimately things fall apart because people are dissatisfied with the service level. Mm -hmm. um, they can they can tell the inexperience yeah. um, in certain instances. I guess it depends on what level of business you're working with as well. Like um, a lot of people get business mixed up with a hustle. Mm. And you can hustle all day. Okay, hold, hold that thought right there. Hold that. Business mixed up with hustle. Okay. Um, thank you guys for tuning in to the internal work of love. <laughs> um, I am Betty Fisher, host, transformation coach, and founder of this segment. And I am here with Candace Caldwell. Welcome. And her topic tonight is to jump or justify if you haven't already, list your state, share this video, stay tuned for advertisement for our seminar and symposium on May 18th here in Benton Harbor, Michigan um, on Saturday at the Hilton Hotel from 10 a.m. to 1 o'clock. You will see advertisement for that soon. Thank you so much, you guys, for coming on and committing to this segment tonight. And I know this is our first time viewing from this page, which will be here every week. So please get this message out to the viewers. Thank you. I know sometimes people are slow and, and, and have a hard time with adapting to change. But thank you guys for tuning in and staying with us tonight. I want to say something. You said people get business mixed up with a hustle. <laughs> My God, is it is there important to or or do you have or would you suggest a a um, mentor or coach in business? Absolutely, I think that it's important, as I had said earlier, to create um, an environment <clears throat> from your village of people who have done it before, who are exposed to the channels that. Uh, allow you to learn 
about business and the atmosphere that mm -hmm. you're in, about other businesses in the area surrounding, and just overall what the expectations are to maintain a business and sustain it. Most of them, you know, end uh, within the first year to two. You know, I'm grateful to God that he's, I'm on year three, um, going wow. into year four, and it's an absolute blessing, but it's been all him, and it's also been because of what I was exposed to right. before getting into this particular mm -hmm. industry. I wanted to um, have an opportunity to make the money that I was making for others, for myself, but had I not had those experiences then I feel like I would be inadequate in some aspects. And in a lot of ways, I probably wouldn't have jumped. I would have found a reason to justify and stay in my comfort zone. But surrounding yourself with people who have already jumped, yeah. who have already experienced those things, yeah. that wisdom is in the, is is um is so valuable like it it doesn't have a price yeah. that you can actually put on it i think we're in a microwave generation though mm -hmm. um if i can be 100 percent honest i feel like more of the younger generation is really in high pursuit of instant gratification yes. when i yeah. uh, started off in the industry overall i was ecstatic to have an opportunity to be an intern um, where I could have hands-on experience, work with professionals in the field who knew it inside and out, see how they operate, see how they were able to execute things from fashion shows to uh, merchandising to actually doing makeup artistry, uh, all of those things. I wanted to build my village mm -hmm. around people who I knew had already achieved yes. what it was that I was trying to acquire. And the truth is, is that in reality, we pay so much to go to college, you know, um, and you're getting conventional information or knowledge from that resource. But to have someone in your life or around you that is invested in where you're going and what it is that you are focused on and is also a part of, it's a part of their life, you can't you can't buy that. No, you, you can't. You can't get that you, even in college because you're a part of hundreds of students that that professor is sharing this information with. But imagine that one on one. What? But it's not an instant gratification yes. thing. It's a trial and error. It's I need you to get my coffee. It's oh I yeah. dropped these pins. Can you pick them all up? It's all of those things. But at the same time the knowledge that you gain from that hands-on experience, the things that you see, the shortcuts, those yeah. are things that you yeah. never a actually have an opportunity to attain unless you are willing to sacrifice. And it's really almost like your form of payment, but it's a payment that's free, you know? So it's interesting to me when I see young people, you know, I'm not saying that they shouldn't jump mm -hmm. because that's what we're talking about today. Yes, jump. However... In a lot of instances, it's important to know that when you jump in certain areas, you might need that support yeah. from yeah. others in order to gain the you know knowledge that you need to carry yeah. you. Yeah, and, and that scripture came to mind to me: having a zeal, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. with no knowledge. Mm -hmm. And so, a lot of that's what the young people are doing to, to um, now. And it just keeps hitting back on some of the things you've already said. You said we need to engage with those above. But it's really difficult for the young people to get out of their little environment because they feel like a little celebrity among those that are to them beneath them. I want to get to those these questions, though, but this was really powerful about internship, mentorship, partnering, and shadowing someone who's been in the business who's experienced in the business so you can get to know if this is something you really want to do. It's priceless. So, it's priceless. Wow, this is good. This is really good. So Tashi has a question. Um, Cortez, I hope that your question was answered. Um, Tashi's question is, how do you remain creative in a world where everyone seems to copycat each other, copy each other? Ooh. 
I think the best way to remain creative is those blinders. You know, for me, as I said before, yes. creativity, it comes from within. I feel that God has blessed me with the gift of being a visionary. Um, I am not really focused on the other things that go on around me. And I think that that is the thing that allows me to remain creative is because I'm center focused on Bode. I want to see the things that God has manifest in me to take fruition. I want to leave this world and feel like I have poured out everything that God has blessed me with on the table, that I have nothing left to give. Um, and because of that, that is what keeps me aligned with uh, my creativity. Negativity, the things that go on around um, and the people that choose to uh, imitate you can always be uh, a way to pull you down. Mm -hmm. and, and you become distracted when you focus on those variables. When you focus on what the next person had to say about what you did with this and what you were here and all these things, then that negativity actually become cemented in your heart and yeah. your life and it's such a yeah. weight that it weighs down on the things that you're supposed to be able to spill out the gifts that god has given Absolutely. you so i just focus on my lane i focus on what i am trying to accomplish next a lot of times also what happens is as creatives it's like um what do they say um great minds think alike mm -hmm. so with the jump thing the truth is is that you may be blessed with a million ideas and things that you want to bring to fruition but if you don't move on them yeah. and someone else moves on them then you feel like oh my oh. god that's the and that and i was supposed to yeah. but god gave it to you first so if you're not paying attention to all the things, if you unplug and yes, you just yes. follow what he places in front of you, it all falls into place. And if someone else comes out with something and it looks similar and this and that, you know. Your lane is your lane. Absolutely. No Absolutely. one can do you like you can do you. No one can. No one can. Oh my God, this is good. And um, I'm grateful for that. Yes. You know? Um... Let me see if there's some other questions here. Cortez said gospel. <laughs> um, Tasha, you said what about Cornerstone? Absolutely. Cornerstone was a great um, yes. platform for me. It was a great opportunity. Um, they are who I actually took my business plan to um, and shared that. And they agreed uh, with, you know, my idea. And uh, it made me feel really good to know that, you know, I had something original that I was going to be able to offer and bring to the community. Um, and I'm so grateful for the clients that I have. You guys are so amazing. You are my reason for still being here, to be 100% honest. Um, I definitely feel like God uh, yeah. has some bigger things for me, but I am super grateful for those who have been nestled around me and continue to support me. Um, I enjoy our opportunities every time you sit in my chair yes. or every time I get the opportunity to create for someone. It is so special to me. Um, and it's how I take care of myself. So I don't want it to ever be a situation where someone does not know um, what the magnitude of my appreciation level is. It's, you it's, know, it's, 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 it's very special. It it's is special. special. It's very apparent spending time with you. And it resonated with me for me to call you back. I'm so grateful that yeah. you did. And that's so important um, as entrepreneurs versus a hustle um, is that a hustler is only about the money. They're not about the people. They mm -hmm. really don't care. But you are passionate and you feel that passion. You feel that love when I'm in your chair. It resonated with me. And that matters when it comes to business. Because when I get when I get service from you, I get you. Mm -hmm. 
and I get your passion and I get your heart. And I think it's important that we that we define the difference between someone who is in this for a hustle, just get money, get money. No structure, no nothing. It's just come and go. And they do. They come and go. They They're do. flybys. They do. They do. And in, in a particular instance, um, recently I was just also talking about, you know, jumping in the aspect of charging your worth. And when I came and I came up with a concept, I wanted a price point that would be comfortable. I knew that it would be um, rare for this area, um, something new. Um, so maybe a little bit uncomfortable to hear initially. But for the most part, if you were to research, you would know that you were getting a value yes, um, yeah. and quality. And I wanted to yes. keep it that way for quite some time. Um, and I noticed that a lot of people came right in and jumped right in on that number, those price points or whatever. There were people, naysayers, who had comments like, I wish I would pay blah, right. blah, blah for whatever and so on and so forth. And it, it made me feel some type of way because mm -hmm. I knew that I had dropped my price by $35 wow. um, to actually be able to service uh, people. But I continued in that focus, in that path, at that number regardless to what it was and I just recently have adjusted my prices but for the most part the whole thing is is that people have to learn it's not yeah. about the popularity and it's yes. not about all of those elements it's about the professionalism it's about what Absolutely. you're getting in the service level and it's about other elements that are surrounding you as to why you're paying a certain thing you know what I mean if I buy a dress out of the trunk of your car versus buying a dress from a specialty boutique I would probably expect to pay more for that opportunity mm -hmm. to be in this specialty boutique to have this one-of-a-kind item versus you know purchasing it in this way or whatever and not a knock on anyone who chooses to right. do a hustle right. it's just more so about people understanding value you know what I mean we need to place value on ourselves Absolutely. but we also need to place value on the things that we invest in and quality service and professionalism too is something that you deliver and it left an impression on me. Oh, I'm so happy. Yes. So yeah. I was it, excited to be a part of your B day, you know? Yeah. Thank I know you. it was amazing. On yes, the outside. it was. I know it was. <laughs> so I wanna get to some other questions here if um, they are here, but I wanna thank you guys again for tuning in tonight to the internal work of love with Betty Fisher. I am host and founder in, uh, of this segment and transformation coach and I'm here with Candace Caldwell for those who do, don't know her welcome tonight if you haven't shared this video please do heart like it share it get it in the hands of people who need it please do <laughs> let others know that we are here from here on out starting tonight was our first night here on this page and we will be here every single week so thank you guys for for tuning in okay she's um tashi says surround yourself with people that have already jumped mm -hmm. absolutely tequila when she said when you're a hustle minded sometimes you don't put out quality work i mm. think when you are slide it up for me passionate and you care about your clients you put yourself in their shoes absolutely tequila absolutely and you'll put out your best work it's so true okay you will continue it you will continue to educate and cultivate the gift absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so Cortez, here's your next question. How do you question. distinguish between constructive criticism and professional insecurity from potential competitors and haters? That's a good question. Mm. Well, constructive criticism usually <laughs> comes from those, or I value constructive criticism from those who I aspire to or who are uh, people who have done it 
who have experienced things and so on and so forth. I think that constructive criticism, like the line between that and haters, mm -hmm. can be a very, very fine line. So you have to be able to have a discernment and to distinguish where a person is coming from and what their actual uh, intent is in speaking to you about something that you are a professional in. Um, as it pertains to potential competitors, um, that is an area that I don't concern myself with much. Um, I do not consider myself competition in a lot of aspects or capacities because I am um, working in, in a dual environment. I'm not just offering the service of makeup or I'm not just offering the service of a dress. Mm -hmm. I offer the service of makeup. I offer the service of dresses. I can also do hair. I just don't advertise it. We have a large mm -hmm. um, group of hairstylists in the area and I'm not you know, trying to right. compete. I just want to be able to provide a service to my clients whereas they can have a full experience yes, and they yeah. feel like they're their best self when they leave. I also mm -hmm. offer styling services. So um, I can dress you for a special occasion from head to toe and give you the look that you need for that particular event. So with those type of things in mind, I, I really uh, rarely see others that are offering those different levels of um, beauty in one environment and so I can't necessarily call them a competitor unless they are able to offer all of those Thanks. elements in one and aside from that I really just feel like it's important like I said to stay focused on your own lane when you're doing you Nobody yes. can do it better than you. You know what I mean? You have to have confidence in that. That's just what it is. And everything else falls into place. And yeah. it has been consistently for me. And so in that particular instance, it's like, well, why am I going to falter now? I hear a, a lot of things, you know. But just because I hear it doesn't mean that it has to be implanted in my spirit. Right. And that right. I have to uh, allow it to manifest some type of emotion, you know right, what I mean? Right. It's for me to listen yeah, to yeah. and to uh, look for the Lord in it, you know, and what he's actually speaking to me about and not being insecure, mm -hmm. you know, about what you know is your gift. And I am solid on the fact that the things that God has given me, nobody can take away from me. You know what I mean? I had a ulnar collateral ligament reconstructed in my right hand. Mm -hmm. At that point in time, I literally thought my life was over. And it's wow. my hand. But it's wow. my hands that I work with. Absolutely. And I said, Lord, like, why would you give me this gift and then have something like this happen where I may not be able to use it? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And after my surgery and after my therapy, I got full mm -hmm. functionability Amen. back with my hands and I actually felt like I became better wow. at a lot of things afterwards so that fear that set into place because of you know my insecurities about what would happen moving forward mm -hmm. could have killed my dreams mm -hmm. you know what I right, mean right. Um, and so we can't allow the things okay. that people say on the outside to come in because they can kill our opportunities. So, uh, that's awesome. The You're right. Between gifts and talents. Yes. Absolutely. I agree, Andre. Gifts can't be duplicated. I agree. Thank you, Carol. I'm looking to see if there's any other questions here. Um, tequila said integrity. Absolutely. And that does make the difference. Um, in business and who you get when, and when we get you we get integrity we get professionalism we get love too absolutely you know and absolutely. it's it is definitely an experience sitting in your chair um, that's what I thrive to do is to give that um, my grandfather Clarence Harden um, he was a well-known barber in the community for several years and I remember uh, going by the shop and he would preach mm -hmm. to every person that sat in his chair 
um, and give them some type of nuggets that God gave him, mm -hmm. you know, to share with them or whatever. And I know that he blessed so many people's lives, even if those people didn't have a God sense right, or right. have a relationship with mm -hmm. God, they left with something, mm -hmm. you know, something that could feed their soul, feed yeah. their spirit, or at least that uplifted them in some way, form or fashion. And there are times where I have moments, you know, and I don't feel the most positive or whatever, mm -hmm. but I, I definitely try my absolute best to um, keep those things in mm -hmm. mind and to give the best experience that I can with each and yeah. every individual that I touch. And then there are times where your customer encourages you and you're not even... So true. You know. So true. Yeah. I've had some really blessed women in mm -hmm. my chair and I am so grateful for those experiences and those opportunities. And they actually develop really great relationships um, that I, I know that I probably would not have yeah. outside of those experiences. So they come to me and come to me for something in particular and I end up leaving with a blessing or a yeah. nugget or something, yeah. uh, a level of wisdom that I had not actually had prior. So I am super grateful. Yeah. Thank you. That was good. Indeed. Okay. Okay. So Andre said, I, kn I know I adjusted my studio prices because of my environment, knowing that I was undercutting myself, but I had to realize my work and quality is way worth it. Patrice. Hey, Patrice. It's, she said it's an exclusive experience oh, and a mark of you. excellence. Thank you. No, you can't. You cannot let your environment dictate your prices. You, We know our worth. We, You know what you are worth. And I, I think the importance of really surrounding yourself, entrepreneurs, with other entrepreneurs, successful ones, that can pour into you too. Because when if you're one who don't get the education, don't sharpen your skills, you can kind of be on the outside and, um, you know, then you're perceived as this wannabe, a, 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 you know, suchy much, mm -hmm. as they say. But you you stay ahead of the game. You're doing your research. You know what's out there. You're searching all over for materials. You know the game of, of makeup. You stay up on it all. It is not just, I, I think it's more than just the look that you're giving, but learning the game. And being exposed on multiple Absolutely. levels is, is super important. I've, I'm grateful to have had the opportunity to yeah. be published um, I have published work awesome. that's out there. I don't shout about everything that I have experienced, but that's a great opportunity because I've had the, you know, ability to touch multiple people on a different level, on different platforms in a magazine and different things of that nature. And I think that, you know, doing shows, I've done the Barner Brothers show a couple of times, yeah. the Remy Saga stage. Um, I was a resident makeup artist. I've just had a lot of different opportunities and those are the things that help to cultivate you um, and your skill and your craft, the travel, mm -hmm. you know, the uh, exposure to other, other, you know, environments. Yeah. Um, those yeah. things yeah. really do change things. There's different styles of makeup. There's uh, trends that yeah. consistently change as it pertains to design and staying abreast of those things is submerging yourself in the creative element, submerging yourself in the things that actually give you the inspiration mm -hmm. to create on the level that you want it to be on. And that that's what I pride myself on. Not just one particular style of anything. Right. You know what I mean? I think originality uh, comes from the rawest place. You know, I find inspiration in so many different things. It can be a uh, song. It yeah. can be a, a place, an environment, a building, uh, the architectural structure of something. It could be someone's smile. Uh, it could be a color. Mm -hmm. You know, there are so many things that I am inspired by that help me to create on a daily basis. And that's why I 
oftentimes get a little frustrated, you know, when I'm closed in the building for, yeah. you know, hours yeah. and hours and days and days is because I need that exposure to keep me yeah. going yeah. in that creative realm, you know what I mean? So I think that is important, um, and I challenge everyone to, you know, submerge yourself in the things that make you happy and that keep you in a space of creativity and growth. Life is about growth, unless you want to be stagnant, you know what I mean? I, um, I, I strongly believe that in order to elevate ourselves, we have to jump. Yeah. We have to jump. If you don't jump, you will never know. You will always be in the same exact place. You'll always yes, wonder. If you jump once and things don't go the way that you'd like it to, you have to know that God is able. You have to continue. You have to. It's super important. Thank you guys for coming on. Those who have just tuned in, welcome to my segment of the internal work of love. And I am Betty Fisher for those who know me or don't know I am Betty Fisher, host, founder, and transformation coach of this segment, and I am here with Candace Caldwell, and her topic tonight is to jump or justify. So welcome. If you haven't, list your state. Thank you, Tammy, for listing your state in the comment box. Please share this video. As you all know, this is the first night that we have aired here on this page so thank you for tuning in even if you did late and may have forgotten so you guys got to get used to where we are now stay tuned for advertisement for our symposium and empowerment seminar on may 18th from 10 o'clock to 1 mark your calendars for that for the reminder and advertisement will you will see that soon for the details of that so thank you so much you guys thank you so much for tuning in I'm, I'm looking to see if there are any more questions yes there is one Cortez says what has been your biggest challenge as a black business owner in this area <clears throat> good questions <laughs> Uh, the biggest challenge that I've had as a black business owner in this area is uh, becoming comfortable with the stereotypes based around uh, what people's expectations are mm -hmm. um, and also with uh, their discomfort with prices. Um, I, if I'm, I, this is a platform to be transparent. Yes, it is. So I'll, be, it? I'll be transparent. <laughs> Hopefully I, I won't have any wounds because of it. But one thing that I will say is that I have found in this area that we love fashion, okay? People here love to dress. People love to show off. People love all things fabulous. But people have a tendency to feel uncomfortable with paying the cost to a black business owner opposed oh to other business owners. Um, you will find, if you do your research, that most fashion designers that are extremely successful in their own right and or have achieved billionaire status, millionaire status, things of that nature, are all, you know, not African American. Um, and the people who infuse the economy the most mm -hmm. are African Americans. We spend the most um, out of all consumers. Um, for every other nationality. So interestingly enough, it basically means that we are comfortable with spending money with other people, but not with our own. We are comfortable with the prices that we see on a price tag when we step into a specialty boutique or mm -hmm. when we step into a Nordstrom, a Neiman, a yes. Saks Fifth Avenue, and so on and so forth because it speaks to status. And you feel as if you have arrived and achieved something by giving that 500 to to $1,000, 2000 to yeah. that business to sustain what is already wealth that has been built. Yeah. But if it's being built by us and our desire is to create a community that's self-sufficient and that has mentors and people who are able to give back 
and who are able to inspire the young black girl Come who wants now. a sewing machine for Christmas, um, then in that particular instance, we have to give and love on our own people. And specifically if they are professional yes. and they are yes, doing buddy. things the right way. Absolutely. Um, and I think that's something that I would challenge our community to do is to really think about how many items you've purchased from Gucci or other brands. Um, and I say Gucci specifically right now because I have a very strong feeling about uh, the sweater that mm -hmm. has come out as extremely controversial. But it's not the only thing that they have done that has not been... Uh, the best for the African-American mm -hmm. community. It's just the first thing that someone specifically, Spike Lee, yeah. spoke out about yeah. and people have started to look at as an example. But then there's others that do not care about it at all. They still feel like, hey, I've spent this money. I'm going to wear it anyway. And to each his own. But my whole point about it is, is that when they made that purchase, when you acquired that item, you felt a level of prestige. Yes, you yeah. felt a level of superiority that is beyond what others can actually afford. So you want to show it off and you want to, you know. But the truth is, is that that black designer that works for this particular brand is the lowest person on the totem yes. pole or either is a actually self-inspired designer and working for their self and not having all the um, the things afforded to them that those large corporations are able to because our community has helped them to build their factories and so on and so forth. And then we oh hold God. our black oh business my. owners to this oh extremely high level of expectation oh but my. don't want to pay the price yes. for it. And it's a difference when it's being made in a manufacturing plant and when the fabrics and things of that nature are five cents to a dollar in comparison yes. to someone spending 30 to $150 for that same yardage because they don't have that money behind them to the wholesale capacity. So essentially you just don't realize you're making them richer and richer and richer because of the fact that they are able to create and establish these things and and I'm speaking in fashion. We're gonna raise an offering for her tonight. For the most part, okay. they're able to <laughs> to establish those things because of the factor that they are being, you know, infused with all of what they have been afforded by our community. So I think it's important for us to just to raise our awareness. Um and be respectful of those that are trying to offer business in the community um, and raise the bar and live to a certain expectation. Absolutely. If we become self-sufficient and self-functioning and if we find ways to uh, make sure that the business owners in the area surrounding us are well off and are structured, then they can give back and they can do more and they yeah. can share more and they can build. There's so many things that I would like to do in the community. There's young women who would love to learn to sew um, and who would love some My. certain things. I would love to have machines to be able to do that. If I could afford to buy those machines and do those things, then I would be able to offer that type of mentorship. But you have to be self-sufficient and comfortable enough to be able to survive when you're volunteering your time mm -hmm. to bless the community to grow um, and do things. So that's my thoughts on that, Cortez. But thanks for the question. <laughs> Is all minds closed on that question? <laughs> oh, my. Yes. Hannah. Somebody said, cue the organ. <laughs> <laughs> so here's from Hannah. What is your favorite part <clears throat> about being style influencer and makeup artist? Hmm. My favorite part about being a style influencer and a makeup artist is my ability to be a chameleon. Style mm. influence is a opportunity to reinvent yourself on a daily basis, um, to do whatever you desire, um, to create a look that is inspired by the event, the day, yeah. the emotion, yeah. the feeling, so on and so forth. The makeup artistry thing, um, I absolutely love the opportunity to transform people, to give them a different look, a different feel, 
um, again, based off of what it is that they have in mm -hmm. store for their day or their event, um, and so on and so forth. And I think that it warms my heart to see the smiles that I can put on uh, a person's face. And as it pertains to style, I think it's more about the feeling that you get. Uh, I'm pretty sure you know what I mean, Hannah. <laughs> but the right outfit, yeah. <laughs> you know, will really change your, your day sometimes. Yeah. It can lift your spirits and make you feel um, the way that you have not before you started the dressing process. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes, you know, just kind of keep you give you the confidence to move forward into whatever it is that you have uh, set before you that day mm -hmm. sometimes knowing like for me walking into the room in the right outfit you know it irregardless to the fact that you yeah. may feel a little insecure right. or you may not feel comfortable in the environment or whatever the case may be when you look good when you look good you feel oh, good. good and it automatically radiates Absolutely. from you and so it's like something that you give off that light you know you you feel that you're in the right space at that yeah. moment so I think style is super important and makeup for your day Tashi says life is about growth jump Candace you have to jump you have to jump Regardless, you're right, Andre. He said, Sometimes, if you don't jump, God, God will, will push, push you off. Absolutely, or either make you extremely uncomfortable, at which point you have no other choice but to jump because you can't go back. Yeah, because it's not comfortable back here. This is it's overflowing, it's just you know, it's not a comfortable space. And if you can't go back, and that's where you came from, and there's nothing in front of you but the ledge, what do you do? You're going to have to jump. And when you jump, he's going to catch you. This is really good. Yes, she is dropping some jewels tonight. Any other questions you guys may have for her while we are on? Who is that? Who you want to Melinda. She said, I say this all the time. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, charge with your work. Don't devalue your service. And don't, um, okay, here's Cortez again. So, what are some of the sacrifices you've had to make to reach your level of success? <laughs> wow. Um, I'm making sacrifices daily, to be 100% honest. Um, I can't even tell you. I have gotten away for, like, my birthday on a couple of occasions for, like, a weekend or something like that. But the truth is, is that... Well, they say live your best life. Mm -hmm. It's not always so glamorous as a business owner. Um, I always thought from the outside looking in that it would be mm -hmm. like synonymous with like living it up and yeah. just, you know, having everything and anything that you want and so on and so forth. I will say I can strongly appreciate the flexibility that I have to make decisions about my schedule mm -hmm. because you're not punching someone's clock. But the sacrifices in the things that you want to do versus the things that you have to do. And what I have to do is continue to work to sustain and make sure that I can cover my overhead costs, that I have some form of security, that I, you know, have the things that I need to continue to sustain mm -hmm. business. Um, and sometimes those things may be taking precedence over the purse that I wanted or wow. the trip that I want to take or the time that I want to spend with my close loved ones, my friends and my family. Um, and those are sacrifices that I make to be able to have a business, to be able to continue to service other individuals and especially as a sole proprietor. Um, it has not been an easy road by far. I am learning new things daily um, and I realize that obedience is better than sacrifice and so I'm being obedient to God and I am being focused as I possibly can and I'm trusting his process because he hasn't failed me yet and I know he won't um, and I know that the reward will be greater in the end 
um, because of it. So I just keep that in the forefront of my mind. And I do try to reward myself, um, but most of the time it's just with food because <laughs> I'm a foodie. Um, and so I will pay for a great cuisine um, <laughs> on any day. So that's like my getaway, you know, when I finally do get a chance to sit down, then I, I want to sit down and enjoy something great, you know. Okay. I'm going to pause a moment just to welcome those who have possibly just tuned in. Thank you for tuning in to the Internal Work of Love. I am Betty Fisher, host, transformation coach, and founder of this segment. I am here with Candace Caldwell, and her topic tonight is to jump or justify. Thank you for those who have just tuned in. And this is where we will be every single week, you guys. For, so for new viewers who are, who are not aware of this segment, weekly we will be here at seven o'clock if the time change the posting will say special night special time so just so you are aware of that thank you for committing this time with us tonight this has been so enriching oh so full of wisdom this woman is and she is so passionate and she is radiating love like right here among me and I think that's what set you apart too as a business owner and entrepreneur is when you show up authentic when you show up and you're ready to thrive you don't just show up you don't just arrive you uh, you thrive thank you 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 are doing the dog mm -hmm. thing thank your you work so is amazing thank you amazing That's and it's all god i have to give him all the glory you know what i mean there are god's gifts and they have been given to me and i am just grateful to be a vessel um and i want to continue to use those gifts to inspire and use those gifts to create and use those gifts for whatever it is that he sees fit for me too because I know that that's where my strength lies and that's where all of uh, the blessings will mm -hmm. flow from you know what I mean yeah. so yeah so you. you there's a couple things um you you've said so much oh my god when so when you do get a break from your busy life busy schedule you make that, I would suppose you make that time count. You make it matter. I do. I try this my absolute best. I think that the two things that drive me the most crazy, being 100% real, is wasting my time and wasting my money. <clears throat> both of them are very sacred to me. Um, and both of them are you know, uh, something that I, I feel that I need to hold on to or to utilize properly. Um, and so when I choose to give my time to someone, then it's important to me that that time is well spent. And in most instances, I would prefer it be an opportunity for me to learn something um, or to mm -hmm. be inspired by something. And... Um, that's where you find me most, you know what I mean? Um, and then as it pertains to the money, you know what I mean? In order to continue to sustain a business and in order to continue to take care of the things that I need for myself, mm -hmm. it's important that I'm a wise steward over it. So um, both of those things are super significant. Wow. Okay. I want to ask if there's any questions here, any Thing you guys um, have for her before we leave and if there's anything that you want to close and leave in the mind of the viewers hmm. in closing I think that the main thing that I want to share and uh, encourage others to do is to jump that's what this is about jumping or justifying you need to take the opportunity to leap mm -hmm. no matter what your fears are no matter what the naysayers are saying no matter what is going on around you if you feel that it's something that God has blessed you with and or given you uh, an opportunity to seize then we should go for it 
and not worry about <clears throat> what's going to happen after you jump because uh, chances are you can't do anything but you know win in that particular instance yeah. and if you fall and if it, you hurt yourself, you have the ability to get back up and do yeah. it all over again. But if you d never jump, you never know mm -hmm. what you're capable of. You never know what's on the other side of it. You can bag up into yeah. that corner where it was uncomfortable before, and you're going to remain uncomfortable. But when you jump, there's nothing but open air and space around you. And chances are, if God made it uncomfortable for you in that space, once you make that move, then you are able to see what's on the other side and what he yeah. had already planned and in store for you. And usually it's a gift. It doesn't always happen immediately. Yeah. But yeah. if you take, you know, pride in the fact that you made the move and the jump, you'll see the evidence of him to follow. Definitely see it in you. Definitely. There was a couple questions. I'm going to go back here. Cortez has got a joke, but he not really. <laughs> has there ever been a client that you couldn't help? Oh my God! <laughs> no matter how you try. No, no. Everybody has the ability of being enhanced, and um, and I embrace any opportunity to have someone mm -hmm. sit in the chair, no matter what their challenges are. And I have been successful at making everyone look and feel more beautiful. And I'm grateful that God has blessed me with that gift. Here's another question from Tashi. Any, any final words of encouragement for fellow creatives? Good encouragement question. for fellow creatives. My encouragement for fellow creatives is, is to find your zone. Find the energy that gives you the focus um, and the dynamics that you need to create beauty and to do the things that God has blessed you with as it pertains to a gift. Do not allow outside sources, people, uh, those things to discourage you. And don't allow anxiety and fear to uh, take over. It's all about you and what God has blessed you with as it pertains to a gift. And continue to uh, use your vision to dream. And dream big. Yeah. Don't you know have any limits. Let it be limitless because that's how God is. He's that big. He's that large. And he sees things see, yeah. beyond what we see them. Let him expand your territory. This is really good. Hannah said everybody has the ability to be enhanced. Absolutely. Yes. He, he, he is. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone has the ability to be enhanced, Cortez. This, this is not fake news. So funny. Any other questions before we close, you guys? This has been awesome. If you haven't already, please share this. I see Tashi been hearting it up. Thank you for your support, Tashi. Heart Thank it. You. Share it. Get it in the hands of people who can use it. Please do. And I hope that I have been able to inspire someone and that there's been no one that is offended by the words that I have to say. Although sometimes the truth can be offensive um, on certain platforms. But yes. for the most part, if you allow it to manifest within you and you take the nuggets that you need from it, then I'm pretty sure that, you know, you'll all find your own obstacles that you yeah. need to jump from. Yeah, this was good. This was good. Well, you guys, we're going to call it a night. Good night. Um, not a question. Just want to oh, say how thank fabulous. Thank you. Thank you. That you are. Thank you. So we're gonna we're gonna close, and we're gonna groove just for a few minutes. Thank you, guys. Share this video, please, if you have not. Please share. Please like. Good night.